Hello. In this video I want to show how I created an arm that could swing through the top and through the bottom and also have realistic arm movements and uh, muscles so that as you move the arm uh, you see the muscles. So we're going to talk about how I did this. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you know what the arm will look like in, in um, five major positions. You want the initial position to be a straight arm so that um, when, it, when you animate it, it can move to either direction and so that the um, creation of the action scripts um, are fairly simple. So here I have the first position. Then I have about 45 degrees up and the arm is starting to, the muscles are starting to flex out. Then at the 90 degree position. And then almost fully um, bent. And then the position where the arm is bent here. Now if the arm, if you look in a mirror, you can actually do this. And what's happening is your upper arm actually rotates. So if we look at the position as it gets close to the top, there's a muscle bulge with the bicep, but then the upper arm is starting to swing over to the other side. So now what you'll do is you don't actually have to render these other, the other images, you'll just flip them over to know how to move your points for the left side as well. Of course, you can do all kinds of tricks like um, flipping the points and things like that, but I'm just showing you the basic approach. Okay, so the next thing that I want to show is the basic setup of the arm itself. So the arm has um, a lower arm and an upper arm. It also has a reference circle, which I'll show in just a minute, but let me, let me just show what that looks like. It's just a circle, but that circle is going to be at the middle of where that bone moves and that just helps you with setting up uh, the vectors. The upper and lower arm is in two sections so that the points can rotate uh, with the bones all the way around. If you just have uh, a single um, vector layer then it's very diff you can't make it flip around over the top. Okay, now I've turned off the bones, I've hidden the bones, so that I can show uh, what the arm vector layer looks like. So let me show the upper arm, and I'm going to turn off uh, the shape, shading, and you can see that a key point here is I have a vector in the middle that's going to form um, the kind of shape of the muscle. And so at first it won't have any uh, stroke Really, the stroke is turned all the way down, and as it moves, um, then with the smart bone, it will the stroke will widen. But a key point that you need to know that is helpful for this type of motion is to set up the upper arm so that you have symmetric points. So I've got three around the top and three on the bottom for the curve, and then I've got uh, two near the bottom and four of them up here in order to get that arm shape. The number of points that you choose is up to you, but um, if they're symmetric it helps you uh, to create that uh, movement more easily so it's symmetrical on the left or right side. Okay, so let me show you what the lower arm looks like. It's a similar kind of arrangement. It happens that one of the points over here is a little bit uh, up, but uh, that's just how it was after my uh, movement, but you can see the symmetric uh, points again doing the same kind of thing. Now I'll talk about this right here at the top of the uh, lower arm. I actually have taken the curvature all the way down so that it's a sharp angle here and this point uh, comes down as opposed to being up high like this. And I'll explain that in just a second. And once again, I have a vector uh, in the middle that's going to form the muscle as the arm bends. Okay, now I've zoomed into uh, the elbow area and turned off the lower and upper arm and turned on the reference circle to show you what I'm using that for. I'm also not at frame zero so that I can show you what happens 
as I rotate this bone. So the center of the reference circle is where the bone is going to rotate. And what I want to do is I want the uh, diameter of the circle to be uh, what the elbow size would be. So let me turn on the upper arm. And as you look at it, the upper arm is created such that uh, the points and I'll uh, turn off the reference circle here so maybe you can see that a little bit better and hide the upper arm so that the points line up on that reference circle to give you a nice curvature on the bottom. That's helpful because when you are doing the lower arm and let me turn on the upper arm as I rotate this arm let me go to the bone layer and do that as I rotate the arm, I want the edges of the elbow to be aligned with that circle. Now, here it's a little bit off because in this version that I'm showing, I've turned off or removed the um, smart bone action, so it's a little bit off. But we want to start out such that those um, points in the lower arm align very well as I rotate the arm. In fact, if you're doing a very simplified arm, you can just stop with that and don't even have to do all the muscle movements um, with smart bones. So what we have here is the basic movement, and as you can see, the points in the lower arm, we, uh, you can bind them how you want, but I chose to uh, bind all this layer um, to this lower arm and bind the upper arm layer to the upper arm bone. So now if you've got uh, long sleeves or um, a very simplified um, uh, arm construction, that may be all that you need. You may not even need to use any uh, smart bones. But let me show you now with smart bones to get the muscles. Now before I actually even start creating the smart bones, the first thing I want to do is set the bone constraints for the lower arm bone and I set the angle constraints at a negative 360 and a positive 360. The reason I'm going to do that is that as I move this around I want it to be able to pass through the top over the top and then it's going to stop here and then it's going to pass over the top in the other direction and the reason is is so that I have the ability to swing through the bottom or swing through the top um, if I don't do that, then what may happen in your animation is that you may get to a place where you know the bone is constrained and it stops and you can't swing through there. And so then you have to you know, uh, go to an individual frame and flip the bone back around. So this is what makes it easy to swing through the bottom or the top. From that point, it's a fairly simple matter just to create normal smart bone actions. So let me turn off uh, this uh, one version without the smart bones and turn on this one with the smart bones. And so I have the actions associated with this uh, lower arm. I've got a lower arm one and a lower arm two. Of course, for the upper arm smart bones, that would be for the shoulder movement. But here I'm just showing the elbow. And I'm just doing a standard construction. Uh, with the lower arm and the upper arm having the smart bone actions. And as I scrub through this, you can see uh, the, the actions that I have associated with it. Um, but I'm just using the standard uh, two, uh, two action type of operation for the elbow. And that's how I create that elbow movement.